you guys might want to get a ruler for this one. Hello you Dirty Potters, how are you today? Today we're starting our official entrance into the Intermediate Playlist. This means that if you're watching this video, you most likely have gone through my entire beginner playlist. Which means I've taught you how to wedge, how to center, how to pull, and some of the tips and tricks that come along with those things. For me, at least, the way that I was taught is that all of the beginner knowledge kind of encompasses centering your clay, opening your well, learning how to pull, and then learning the entire gambit of the most basic shapes that you could learn on the wheel. This includes your cups, your bowls, your mugs, your lidded jars, your seed pods, your plates. All shapes that you will need later on in the intermediate playlist, as the intermediate playlist is where we get a deeper understanding of our medium, as far as clay goes, and the shapes that we can play with. But of course, you need to learn those shapes in the first place, which is why the beginner playlist is so important. You don't really have to be good at them. You don't have to be good at making a master craftsman teapot. This video is a little bit special to me. You see, the way that I was taught was exactly the way I explained to you just now. I learned how to center, I learned how to pull, and then I learned the gambit of all those shapes, and I made the most grotesque look monster of a teapot that you'll ever see in your whole life but you know what I learned the basic shape of a teapot and that is what encompasses part of the beginner knowledge but when I first passed my beginner classes and I went into the intermediate classes I learned how to control my medium a lot better and I learned the difference in between a beginner crafter and an intermediate crafter an actual craft the, the good the good spicy meatball not only am I gonna give you the same lesson that he gave me when I first entered the intermediate classes I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks to really help you get into that intermediate phase if you're not there yet. And instead of sitting us down and looking at a whiteboard and going like this is uh, what you just uh. He barely even spoke to us actually. He instructed us to get two five pound balls of clay, get a little piece of paper and a pen so that we can write down of course our results, and then center our clay, open our well, and just sit there. Do nothing else until further instruction. And what we learned and was illustrated to us afterwards was eye-opening for the majority of us. The majority of us now understood after that lesson the difference in between somebody on his level and someone on our level. A lesson that I'm gonna give you today. Now I'm not gonna ruin the surprise. We're gonna go along on a little journey together. So what I want you to do is number one, get yourself a ruler. Number two, get yourself a pen and a piece of paper so you can write something down. And center your clay and open your well, I'm gonna go do that myself real quick because we're past the beginner phase I don't need to illustrate to you how to center because you're already there, right? So here's a picture of a cute dog, and I'll be right back with that lesson When I started my very first intermediate class my teacher told me to do exactly what I told you to do just now Get your ball of clay center it on the wheel open it up and then don't touch it. He left us hanging for quite a bit actually. We were all like, what do we, what do we do? We already know how to do this. What, this isn't new to us. At this point, he explained to us what the three pull rule is for professional potters. If you cannot get any more height out of your clay body in three pulls, then you've most likely reached your maximum height. None of us claimed ourselves professional potters, of course, but he illustrated to us how we can get more height off the wheel, straighter cylinders, and a little bit of a cleaner body, as well as more even, off of our clay bodies by putting us through this one exercise. A lesson that I am now passing on to you. I want you to pull this cylinder three times and measure your maximum height, which is why I mentioned the ruler earlier. You don't really have to worry about it being straight, but you cannot choke the clay, you cannot shorten it, you can't do anything to it. You have to pull it three times naturally how you would regularly pull a body of clay. So let's do that now. This 
is my maximum height on three poles with this large of a cylinder. Now granted, the skinnier your cylinder is, the more height you're probably going to get because you have more clay going up instead of out. But I have a fairly large hand, so my hand is perfectly fitting in here, so I can't really make it any smaller. This is my personal height for three poles. I'm going to take my ruler and measure it now, and that, for me, is about nine inches. This is me using no tricks. This is not me coloring, not evening out my clay before I threw it. This is not me trying anything special. This is me the way I personally throw, very aggressively. This honestly took me about two pulls and by the third pull it started to wiggle a little bit because I'm an aggressive puller. We're gonna move on with the lesson by cutting this cylinder in half. We're gonna take half of the cylinder, get our pin tool, and just cut it in half. Now what I want you to do is to try your best to get all the clay from the bottom of the cylinder and reach that same height that we had originally again. Fair warning, you're most likely not going to reach that height unless you left a lot of clay at the bottom of your cylinder, which is kind of the point of this exercise. It's to teach you guys how much clay you're leaving at the bottom of your cylinder. At this point, when you're trying to pull back up to the original height, you can use any trick in the book you want. You can color your clay, you can even out your clay, you can dig extra clay from the bottom, you can use anything you want. But at this point, I need you to get double the height that you have right now. You don't have to make sure the cylinder is straight, you don't have to make sure the cylinder is clean, you don't have to do anything like that because we're not keeping this at the end of the day. But we are gonna measure it now that we've tried to get back to our maximum height. And yep, I got right back up to nine inches. I didn't pull any movie magic on you either. This isn't me getting a whole new cylinder. That original ball of clay that I wedged beforehand, I still actually have over here. This is all the clay that I just pulled from that little tiny cylinder that we had, strengthened up all the way back to its original height. The point of this lesson, once he taught us this, was to teach us about how much clay we have left at the bottom of our cylinders. A lot of our stuff as beginners were a little bit too thick. They were a little bit too uneven, but guess what? Now all the clay from the bottom of here that would have been heavy, where up here is usually a little bit thinner, is now all the way up here. This is probably a pretty even cylinder when I cut it in half. You see, it's not really about how thin you can get your walls. You don't really want your walls to actually be thin. The main point of a good piece of craft is to make sure that the walls are even. You don't want a big chunk down here and you don't want super skinny up here. What you're really looking for is consistency. Consistency and evenness in your clay body is where the strength of your product will actually come from if you turn it into a final product. Consistency within your clay body is actually where the strength of your craft will come from. It's not from your pottery being super thin, it's not from your pottery being super thick and uneven. If it's uneven, it's going to have a little bit of discrepancy in where it actually wants to sit and it might create cracks in the body. Making a nice, even clay body like this is really what your goal is. Can you imagine what this clay body would have looked like on the inside if I cut this in half before I tried to pull it a second time up to the same height? You can only imagine all the clay that I pulled all the way from down here to make this a taller cylinder would have been displayed all the way down here. It would have been one chunky boy, that's for sure. When my teacher had us cut our cylinders in half, we really got the point across. Because from the get-go, we've already been taught to cut our cylinders in half. But we always noticed there was a giant piece of wedge all the way down here whenever we did. Finally, after this lesson, he said, look, you see how much clay you're wasting? Do you see how much clay is at the bottom of your cylinder? This is the difference in between a beginner and an intermediate crafter. When I learned this lesson, I was blown away, of course, and I still use this as practice today to keep myself a little bit more sharp whenever I have not thrown for quite some time. This is the thing that I go, okay, so this is my limit with this clay, this is my limit with this clay, this is how I'm feeling today. And sometimes I come to the wheel and I don't feel so great, but you know what? I know where I stand as far as my skill level goes every time 
I try to do this. As much as I dislike saying it, this is actually a valuable lesson for production potters as well, because you're probably wasting a lot of clay if you're just pumping stuff out day by day by day. If you're making the same shape over and over and over again, you're probably really good at making that shape, yes, but how much clay are you wasting at the very bottom of your cylinders? If you're a production potter, every little bit counts. Let's take this off, center the other piece of clay, and let's talk about a couple of potter tips and tricks to try and get this height or this practice going. Ooh. now we're at the stage which most people or most potters call donut and when we get into the donut form most people just start pulling from this point on but I've always been taught one extra step by my teacher in fact I always thought it was completely normal among all potters until I got out into the pottery world while you're in your donut form right before you start pulling take your knuckles compress them into the clay body as it spins and put your fingers on the inside try and squeeze these two together and keep your stability Once you've gotten some nice indents in there, slowly take your knuckles out, move up a little bit, and do it again. And once you get to the very top, make a little arc out of your sponge and press down. This little arc on the top of your clay body is really important for your intermediate lessons because this is how you're going to end up smoothing out the high majority of your clay. Each and every time you make a cup and each and every time you make a bowl, I want you to take your sponge, wet it just a tiny bit, make a little arc with it like this, and put it right over the top and very gently press down. This is going to smooth out the high majority of your cups, your bowls, and people will definitely notice when they start drinking and eating off of your craft. Hopefully you see these indents made by my knuckles into the clay body. This for me was called beehive. You know, because it looks like, like a bee. I feel like I shouldn't have to explain that one to you. Although your clay does get a little bit taller from the donut form, beehive is not a form of pulling. Do not mix it up with pulling. What you're really doing is you're taking the clay from the bottom of the cylinder and you're slowly evening it out through the clay body before you pull. This will give you a little bit more evenness. It'll make it a little bit easier to pull for you when you do start pulling. And it'll get a little bit of that extra clay we've been concentrating out of the bottom of the clay body and up into the clay body. The the second tip that I can give to you is right before we started centering this, you probably saw the camera zoom in way deep at the bottom of the cylinder as I was pulling. I did that on purpose. I did that on purpose because I really wanted you guys to see where I'm getting all that excess clay from. I'm getting it from the very bottom of my cylinder. If I got this sponge and I put it away so that you can see exactly what my fingers are doing through my sponge, I'm going all the way down to the bottom. My nail is actually hitting upside down the bottom of my wheel and I'm hitting this and I'm pulling all the way from the bottom of my cylinder and then I start to pull upwards. This is where your clay needs to come from. This part of the clay body at the bottom of your cylinder is called the skirt. This is where your clay body is holding the high majority of your clay, and this is where you need to be pulling from when you're trying to get maximum height on your cylinders. All too often do I go into ceramic art classes and pottery classes, and I end up seeing people pull from about right here. If I see somebody pulling from right here instead of all the way at the bottom of their cylinder with a high majority of your clay is left over, I'm going to heavily assume they are still a beginner in ceramic artwork. Many people message me and ask me, how do I get more height on my cylinders? How do I do this? How do I do that? And that honestly starts all of that starts with going all the way down to the bottom of your cylinder when you start to pull. It only makes sense. This is where the majority of your clay is left over whenever you're done. If you don't believe me, next time you pull something, go ahead, make a form, cut it in half, and see that there's probably a giant wedge, especially if you're a beginner, all the way at the bottom of your clay body. Of course, it's naturally going to be a little bit thicker than the rest of your clay body because you're going to have to trim it. But at the same time, whenever I teach a lot of beginners going into intermediate, the same lesson I'm teaching you now, I get like this Michelin man, big shape, tired, fat thing at the bottom of their clay body, only proving more so that they never started pulling from the bottom. They started pulling from right here, which makes very little sense to me. Yes, it's gonna look like you're pulling. Yes, you're still going to pull clay body, but at the same time, 
look, this whole section here that I just like pseudo pulled, this whole section right here still has all the clay that you're leaving down there. The third tip that I can give you is a little bit in vain because I don't even do this. I pull fairly aggressively, which means that as I start from the bottom of my cylinder, I pinch off a big old wedge of clay and that's, that's, I'm taking this up with me. This thing is, if I'm going up, it's going with me. When most people pull their clay, they end up pulling with the same exact consistent pressure all the way through. And that's fantastic. That's a really good lesson for a beginner especially. I want them to do that. But as you get into the intermediate phases, you're going to have to learn to be really aggressive at the bottom and get that clay up there and slowly release pressure as you get to the top. All too often do I get people on my Instagram and Facebook DMs asking me, hey, why does the top dry faster than the bottom of my clay body and of course that's because there's more clay down here and it holds more water content so of course the thinner parts of the clay are going to dry faster than the thicker parts of the clay that makes total sense but you don't want it to be too thick so in order to minimize this especially going into the intermediate phases is start pulling very aggressively with high pressure at the bottom see that big old caterpillar there and once you get to the top start releasing pressure very slowly you see that caterpillar is getting smaller once you get right about up here I would say I'm putting about 20% of the pressure that I was putting down there this poor clay is so overworked if you do pull super hard up here and you keep the same energy or the same pressure that you did down there when you should be pulling aggressive to bring all the clay up to the body you're gonna end up getting one of these I'm gonna do this on problem mess this clay up on purpose for you you end up getting a super, super thin clay body. Great, now somebody has to eat off of this sharp edge of a vase that you, why would you eat off of a vase? Somebody has to eat off of this super sharp edge that you made and it's probably gonna cut them and it's probably gonna chip really easily because you didn't release pressure as you came up the clay body. This is a super messed up piece of clay. <laughs> we need to stop. Check it out. <sighs> I'm expressing myself. I hope those three tips help you guys out a lot. And this was a lesson that was really important for me. It was honestly a turning point in the development of my wheel throwing skills. Number one, learning that I wasn't pulling all the way from the bottom of my cylinder. That was massively important. That changed up the game for me. Number two, displaying that after someone asked me to get that same little piece of clay and get back up to the same height. I was like, wow, there's literally double the height worth of clay down at the bottom of my cylinders just because I'm not pulling from the bottom of my cylinder. I've been pulling from like this area here instead of all the way at the bottom. That's that's why I'm wasting so much clay. That's why my tops are super thin while my bottoms are super thick. That's why my clay is super uneven. This explains so many things. And number three, starting to release pressure as you come all the way up the body. As a beginner, I want you guys to keep constant pressure so that you get that muscle memory. But as you start going into the intermediate phases, I want you guys to understand that releasing pressure as you pull is a necessary part of craft because somebody is going to use your stuff if you're an aggressive puller like myself and you pull aggressively all the way through guess what you're gonna have a little floppy floppy at the toppy or if you're an extremely passive puller the entire clay body is gonna be thick and you're probably not gonna get height in the first place so remember guys three pulls is probably your maximum height for this practice I hope you guys learned something today I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see wait oh, hold on hold on I love you I don't know who's texting me, but uh, they need to go away right now.